And as you hear my voice and we're kind of preparing, I want you to ask this question in curiosity. Now I have a, a few things we're gonna say, so do can start prepare, but just kind of let your body listen. We're talking to the body. So the question is, in curiosity, like Karen so beautifully said it today, what energy, space, and consciousness could you be if you were willing to accept yourself in a state of joy? What energy, space, and consciousness could you be if you were willing to accept yourself in a state of joy? So the opposite, really, of joy is suffering. It really is. We don't have joy when we have suffering. Suffering is very rarely experienced in the moment. Suffering is experienced in a state of future pacing for the most part and often living in the past. So what do I mean by future pacing? So forgive this, Lorna, but my examples of a breakup. Us girls will understand this. If we have a breakup, especially when we were a kid, you know, we'd go around in our sweatpants with our hair in a ponytail and unwashed and no face or whatever in our suffering. And then people would notice and they would say, oh, what's wrong? Well, I'm having a, you know, oh, I broke up or whatever. And we kind of know how long we're going to live in that place. We sort of future pace, right? Well, I'm going to suffer for a couple weeks, you know, and then I'll get it back together. But really, we suffer about what could be in the future that we are, are pacing, future pacing won't be. That's really mostly where our suffering lives, about what's going to happen in the future that we perceive from right now that it, it won't. So joy is in place of that. Joy is in being okay with whatever comes, being really present and in the moment, or being certain that what comes will serve you in the most wonderful way. So what we're gonna do today is really kind of look at the places within the body where suffering is still kind of lurking around and see if the body would be willing, and it may not be, but see if it would be willing to replace that or consider replacing it with the sensation of joy. Now again, suffering is in no way wrong. It isn't. There are lessons in it for it. And, and sometimes we want to choose it. Like we really want to go through it for a bit. We want to feel angry and sad and frustrated. But like I said before, with cognitive movement, we have the choice of how long that is. And it's a choice of we simply use the ball and do something different. When you're already at the levels of consciousness that you guys are, that choice becomes all the more poignant. You start to recognize, oh, wait a minute, that feels uncomfortable. Where before you would just be in the suffering. You'd just be in it. I mean, there's no choice about it, right? You're just in it. So now we're at a place of, oh, hmm, that doesn't feel comfortable. Maybe I should do something about it or not really, really your choice at this point. So we're really going to ask the body about the choice and whether or not we want to run persistent loops of grief, loss, suffering, and pain, or would we be willing, and listen to this question, body, to run persistent loops of joy? Now, there's a problem there for some of us, because we've been taught by our religions, our society, that people who run around in joy and bliss are nutcases, right? They're loony, they're out of their rock, off their rockers, you know? And the suffering creates purity of spirit. If that's running in your background somewhere, your body will have just felt that, right? Suffering is in some way honorable. Our saints suffered. You know, Jesus suffered. Moses suffered. Abraham suffered. You know, often at the hands of God even. So suffering can be considered in some of our cultures a very high level of being. You know, in Italian, you know, if we talk about a priest who is wonderful and beautiful, we'll say, 
oh poverino, meaning oh poor. But what we mean is saintly, right? So it runs deep. So if, if that runs in your system, your body will have just felt it. Notice that. So what we're asking again is, would you be willing or could you be willing? Is your body willing? So let's check in with permissions here. Is your body willing at this point to possibly replace persistent loops of pain and suffering with persistent loops of joy, healing, faith, ecstasy, kindness, patience, compassion, miracles, Kundalini experience, 2020 vision, beauty as a way of life. Would your body be willing, could it be willing to replace persistent loops of suffering with synchronicity, surrender to what's happening? A state of, oh, I guess that's happening over there. All right, that's what I mean by surrender. Devotion. A state of constant devotion. See what your body feels about this as we're running through the list. Rapture, or that rapturous state of ascension. Could you be willing, would you be willing to replace loops of suffering with joy? Upliftment, transformation, radiance. Is there anywhere in your body that would be willing to, to run a program of radiance on a more regular basis? Is there anywhere in your body that would be willing to have absolute pure mercy for everything you see? There was a funny thing that happened, Marina knows about this, after one of the Cogno Consciences where everyone was blessing people in the airports. You know, you just were outpouring of, may you be well, may you have the life you want. Uh, somebody was talking about blessing the drug dog, you know. Um, so mercy and blessings. Would you be willing to run in a constant state of being merciful and blessing all that is? So, so that's the question.